Target's being changed. Now it's time to find out who is going to take the gold medal and the world title in the Recurve men's team event. We're going to see China going up against India. China ranked fifth after the ranking round, India 11th. China beat Australia in the quarterfinals before an impressive 6-2 victory over Korea in the semi-finals. India came through Chinese Taipei with a 6-0 win before their impressive semi-final win over the Netherlands. So we're about to see China and India shoot off for the world title. The crowd waiting in anticipation for this gold medal match and so are we. Let's go down to the range to welcome the teams out. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the athletes to the field for the recurve man's team gold medal match. Well, China lead us out. They've got two 18-year-olds, Wei Xiaoxuan and Feng Hao in their lineup and the 23-year-old Ding Yi Yang. Well, they're going to get presented out to the crowd. And I'm going to ask you one question. Is this a lineup for a gold medal match that you would have predicted? You know what? I think I would have predicted uh, maybe Korea versus Netherlands in the gold medal. But the interesting thing about this match is both countries were very dominant maybe about 10 years ago. And now both countries are actually starting to get much better in the recent years. Trying to have some support in the crowd. And they go up against this team. It's India. Target number two. Shooting on target two will be Taran Deep Rai, the 35 year old, who got a team silver well, way back in 2005. Then the 22 year old Pravin Ramesh Dadav, and Atanu Das, the 27 year old. Representing India, Atanu Das. Ramesh Jada. Couple of salutes in there. Yeah, Ateno Das and Terendeep Rai actually have a lot of experience. Like I said, 10 years ago they were very dominant. Both archers were still shooting back then and they were doing very, very well. I think they'll help their teammate um, calm his nerves maybe and maybe they shared a little bit of their own experiences preparing for this match. Yeah, a lot of support for them as well. High fives all around from the coach. It's a little different in the other camp. There's Coach Lee Wang Wu again. He was a previously Korean national team coach, but now he's working with China, and he's definitely one of the reasons why they're doing so well in the recent years. Well, here we go. This for the gold medal. China will shoot first against India. Quick shot. I don't know if he was fully ready for that one. Well, wider grouping than perhaps they would have liked. 26 out of a possible 30. So we hand over to India. High shot. I guess it felt good for him, so he's adjusting the sight. You good? Very quick, but confident, and and I guess he doesn't have to adjust his sight at all because he feels good about it. I put the youngster in the middle. Right, 
the most experienced oh. a lot. That was a really oh. quick one. I don't think he knew exactly where that was going to land, but sometimes luck is on your side in this sport. <laughs> Yeah, that was, uh, you could see them talking afterwards, he wasn't expecting that at all. But they have got a one-point lead. Yeah. China oh. find the center of the target. Yeah. Ray Shao Xuan. Follows up his teammates, 10 with a nine. So I just want you to look at the point of his arrow when he's about to shoot. You'll see something just click right as right before he lets go. Okay. Pulled that one out to the right, makes an adjustment ding. So a 53 set as the target. India have got a big chance to take the first two set points here. So yeah. Bang. Good start for Das. I think they switched their order for the for the second half. Eight. High eight, so Terendip Raya was actually the anchor, and um, Atanu Das was the first archer, so maybe this is just the order that works for them. Okay, so they switched things around, it didn't work for them. 53 apiece. Uh, and there was a big opportunity there for uh, the Indian team. And you're quite right, Pravin Ramesh Jadav went third and fourth arrows. Yeah, we'll have to see what happens in the next end and see if it, maybe that's just how they decided to shoot the finals. Well, let's see if they stick with that as we take a look back. Well, actually, we don't take a look back. We're looking at the Chinese team. Oh, here we go. Here it is. So what you just saw there, that click right before he lets go of the arrow, it's called the clicker. All it really is is a draw check. It makes you know that, it lets you know that you've drawn back the exact same distance, so the, bo uh, the force behind the arrow is going to be the exact same every time. And each archer sets that up differently depending on what they like. Yeah, it, it depends on your form. It depends on your alignment and... Um, you, you have to just make sure that you're able to pull through the clicker constantly because then your shot will be consistent and a little bit smoother. If you stop before the clicker and then you try and just pull it through with a lot of force, your shots aren't going to be consistent at all. Well, the Indian team had an opportunity, but they let it pass. And here we get all the adornments uh, that we see these archers. They like to customize their kit, don't they, Vanessa? I guess, and it looks like, is that uh, Captain America or a duck? I really don't know. Maybe it's because it's yellow and red for China. Those are bringing him, him some luck. Oh, well, I can't quite uh, see whether that, what that was. I think it might be right. I think it might be a duck. There are plenty of them out on the canals here in this beautiful city. So all square in the gold medal match. China step up to the line to shoot first in the second set. Okay. On the line by the looks of things. Great shot from Feng. Gets the higher score. Yeah. Ding Yi Yang, oldest member of the team at 23. Shoots third. 
Oh, and he's got it in the nine as well. So there was just a little bit of a, a loss of back tension right before he shot the shot. And that's just because um, if you if you lose that, then you get you sort of lose a little bit of force behind the arrow. Well, that one's gone low. He's in the center of the target on the vertical, but uh, needs to be a little bit higher. Right. Oh. Going low. This time the shot looked okay, unlike the first set. Yeah, I didn't really see anything in that shot. It looked good to me and Maybe he's a little bit perplexed. He's shaking his sight, maybe wondering if something is loose. Back to Feng Hao. Oh, yeah. yeah. An opportunity for China to put this one out of reach. The second set could be theirs if they score 55 or more. Very vocal. Yeah, Wei has a quick shot, and I think as long as he sticks to that and uh, keeps the timing consistent, he's going to continue to shoot tens. Lovely. They found the middle of the target, finishing with three tens. A 58 is not a reachable target for India. They've lost this second set, but they'll use these arrows to hone themselves for the next set. And it looks like uh, we've got the same a repeat of the order with Jalav shooting the second yeah, and the fourth up. arrows, and he's put that one into the X ring. So I guess it just works for them. Different teams have different strategies, and I guess whatever is going to have the highest performance, that's the order that you want to have. Ten. Good. Scored as a 10. That looked a tiny bit low. I do think it was low, and there's an asterisk around the nine now. That means it's going to go to a measure. Uh, not that that's going to make any difference here. The set points are gone, and are finishing with an eight. So not the three arrows they would have wanted, but the set was already gone. China go into the lead, but I still feel like this one is on a knife edge. I do. The teams need to really dial in a little bit more, shoot more tens. There's too many errors right now, and they're shooting a lot of eights, was, which is quite uncharacteristic of a match like this. Well, that third arrow from India was a seven, and uh, it just was a bit of a weird one, wasn't it? Because it looked fine, but the response from China when the opportunity came was three tens from Feng Wei, and then Ding Liang just finishing it off, and it was a really fine finish. It pined finish to that set for China and look how vocal they're getting with each other there they, you know if you like they're standing an inch taller in some ways yeah and this is going to give them a little bit more confidence for the next set and you, you can see that they're quite relaxed they're enjoying the moment and I think they're they're a young team but I, I'm sure we'll see more of them in the future as well yeah, a, bit, a bit more exuberance in that second set from the Chinese team and it's worked for them Complete contrast on the other side of the uh, target. Uh, sorry, on the other side of the shooting line, where well, we see smiles and confidence here. No, you can't see this on your well. Oh, there you you go. can see it on your screen. Yeah, there's a bit of head scratching, and uh, you can see in the eyes of Atano Das there. He's trying to stay focused as they'll shoot first in the third set of the gold medal match here no! in Den Bosch. Solid. Eight. Eight. 
straight high again. There's different reasons why arrows go high, and he, I guess he's thinking it's maybe his sight, because I guess it felt like a good shot to him. Twenty-seven set at the halfway stage by India. Now, China have dialed into the center. Their last three arrows were all tens. Oh, he felt that right away. He tried to push it at the last minute, but it just wasn't enough. Good shot. Just like I said, Wei needs to keep his timing consistent, nice and quick, and make those shots very, very confident. The ten will give China a mini advantage. Yeah! It is a ten from Ding Li Yang. India need to find the center of the target right now. good when he shoots the fourth arrow he's every fourth arrow that he's shot in every set has been a 10. Yeah, so that order working for them Rai shooting a nine not bad so Das goes first and last for India he started with a 10 in this set And he finishes with a 10. Strong stuff from Atanu Das for India. A 56 target set for them, but China can do this. That's a 9. Now, they can't drop any more points if they want to secure the world title in this set. There's an X. Another so this is a big one. A 10 for the gold medal and the 2019 world title all down to Ding for China. Called a 10 from the coach, but that looked like it snuck into the nine. That's what the scoreboard says. A little bit of confusion there, but it looks like that is a nine. I think Ding knows that. Now, what that means is they share the set points in the third set. The target for the win is five points, so four, not quite there yet. Well, a 10 required from Ding Yi Yang for the final arrow to take the title. Here it is, the concentration on his face clear to see, but I think he knew that was going to slip into the nine, just hitting one of the other arrows by the looks of things. It does. I, I don't know if he, ah, he, he, it looks like it was maybe a good shot and... I don't know. Sometimes you feel the difference between that kind of shot right outside the 10 and what's right inside of the ring. So <laughs> they're looking down the scope there just to, to check where it landed. Uh, I think that was uh, is that Feng looking down the scope. Still confident. And like you say, I think he thought it was a good shot. I, I hit one of the arrow, other arrows. I, Definitely could have, and it's a possibility. You need to check the arrow knocks and make sure that nothing is damaged because you, when you get tight groups, that can definitely happen. Uh, India are still alive as a result. They trail by two points still. They need to get all the points in this fourth set.
Oh! Used up bags of time there, but recovered from a massive wobble. So he just lost back tension there, but he tried to pull it back again, and he made the most of the shot. And he's eaten up a lot of the time. And this is a long hold as well. No, exactly. He salvaged a nine out of that. They are nervous, the Indians. They can't overthink it. They need to just stick to their shots that they always shoot and repeat it, even in competition here. A uh, great shot from Rye. So nervy moments, but a 28 out of 30 is a good score. We switch over to the other side of the shooting line and see how China respond. They just have to match the Indian score to take the world title. So much confidence. He's just shot four tens in a row, and I think he's very, very happy with his shooting. That's a ten from Ding. They've got the mini lead to the delight of the supporters in the crowd. Back to Jadav. And India. It's a long hold. Time is going to play a big factor in these last three arrows for India. They're nearly down to 30 seconds for two arrows. Rai's got to get this one out quickly. And he does, but it's another eight. He has given Das a full 20 seconds, though. Really could do with a 10 here. Four, three, two, one. Just getting it out quick enough, but it's only an eight, and they've set a target of 52 for China. That is all China need to get the single point and the world title. Feng Hao. Nine is more than enough. Over to Wei Xiao Zhuan. Staying calm and shooting another ten. Great stuff from Wei. Ding here. Needs just a four to take the world title. Solid, dependable, are just what they needed. China are the recurve men's team world champions of 2019. Solid, consistent and dependable when India were all at sea and under pressure. They wobbled big time, but China capitalized and have taken the world title. The name of the game here was really consistency. You can see China was much more consistent than India. India, on the other hand, had a lot of flyers, a couple of eights here and there, and that's just too much, to, too many points to lose when you're shooting against a team like China. They were very consistent, had lots of tens, and especially Wei, as a second shooter, he really, really pushed the envelope and had a lot of good shots. Well, there we have it. Wei, Shou, Xuan, Feng, Hao, and Ding Yi Yang are the Rico Benz team champions of the world.